The FBI and U.S. intelligence agencies have confirmed Iran was responsible for recent attempted hacks into the Trump and Biden-Harris presidential campaigns, the agencies said in a joint statement. We have observed increasingly aggressive Iranian activity during this election cycle, said a statement by the FBI, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which oversees the defense of government computer systems. This includes the recently reported activities to compromise former President Trump's campaign, which the attributes to Iran, they said. The hacking and similar activities, federal officials said, reflect Iran's determination to complicate the ability of any U.S. administration to pursue a foreign policy at odds with its own interests. The goal is to sow discord, we can faith in democratic institutions and influence the outcome of elections that Iran perceives to be particularly consequential in terms of the impact they could have on its national security interests, officials said. Iran, the U.S. statement said, had also targeted the campaign of Harris, who will formally accept the Democratic Party's presidential nomination at this week's convention. Iran's mission to the United Nations issued a statement calling the allegations unsubstantiated and devoid of any standing and challenged Washington to release evidence for the claim. As we have previously announced, the Islamic Republic of Iran harbors neither the intention or the motive to interfere with the U.S. presidential election, the mission said. The statement was released at a time of significant tensions between Washington and Tehran as the U.S. hopes to halt or limit a threatened threatened retaliatory strike on Israel over the assassination of Hamas official Ismail Haniyeh. Another well-known Ukrainian unit has joined the Kursk operation. As Forbes writes, the 501st Marine Battalion of Ukraine was seen on video, its fighters were tearing down a Russian flag in one of the region's populated areas. The battalion's 400 or so Marines are at the forefront of combat missions, the unit stated. But it wasn't always that way. The 501st has a sad history of avoiding combat. In that sense, the Kursk campaign is an opportunity for redemption, Forbes adds. The publication recalled that this battalion was part of the Crimean garrison. However, when the Russians invaded the peninsula and Ukrainian troops were leaving this territory, only 64 Marines of this battalion joined them. Hundreds of their brothers in arms voluntarily remained in Crimea, effectively siding with the Russian occupiers. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry has reactivated the 501st Marine Battalion. In the first months of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, its fighters joined the garrison in Mariupol on the Black Sea coast. Russian troops laid siege to Mariupol 
mercilessly starving and bombing the city's garrison and civilians. The main garrison, more than 2,000 people, held out for three months, eventually retreating to the Azovstal steel plant and then finally surrendered in late May 2022 when food, ammunition and medicine ran out, the publication says. However, even here, Forbes writes, the 501st Marines were not among the last to continue the defense of the city. They left in early April, six weeks before the defenders of Azovstal. As explained, without coordination with neighboring forces, about 270 Marines abandoned their positions and weapons and went into Russian captivity. We want to avoid casualties and bloodshed. I'm tired of seeing people die. Konstantin Besmertny, a senior lieutenant with the 501st Marine Battalion, told Russian state media after the mass surrender. As a result of these actions, Ukrainian authorities have launched an investigation into the unauthorized surrender of the Marines, focusing on Basmutny and another high-ranking officer. Over the past two years, about 20 Marines have returned to Ukraine as part of a prisoner exchange. However, about 250 remain in Russia. Now, the 501st Marine Battalion, destroyed in Mariupol, has been restored again with new officers and soldiers. It entered the battle in 2023, first in the Kherson region, and this summer, they were transferred to the Kharkiv region to defend Vovchansk. Last week, the 501st Marine Battalion apparently moved 160 kilometers between Vovchansk and Kursk as the Ukrainian invasion force extended its control past the town of Sudza, 10 kilometers from the Russian-Ukrainian border. With the battalion's arrival, the invasion force now includes troops from the army, airborne assault forces, territorial forces and marines. The newspaper concludes.